What's up everybody and welcome to this brand new Angular tutorial. Angular is an epic framework. It contains so many great building blocks that allow us to write well-structured and clean code. Furthermore, it contains a compelling CLI that allows us to generate modules, services or components. So wouldn't it be cool if we could use the same development approach that we use in front-end also in the back-end? Well, there is Nest.js, and Nest.js is deeply inspired by Angular, so it allows us to use a similar approach also in the backend. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can easily generate a backend with Nest and integrate it with an Angular frontend. In today's video, I will show you how to implement an application that displays the world's best players. Yes, Real Madrid players are the WordPress players, not Barcelona players. The player's data will be delivered by a Nest.js backend and we will use an Angular frontend that consumes this data and displays a list of players. If you never heard of Nest.js, Nest.js is a progressive Node.js framework for building backends. It's deeply inspired by Angular and it uses similar building blocks and similar concepts that we already know from the Angular world. So if you already have experience with Angular, it will be pretty easy for you to get started with Nest. Throughout this video, we will build a backend with Nest. And while building the backend, we will encounter so many familiar concepts that we already know from Angular. So let's jump right into it. Let's start by implementing our backend. To implement our application, we open up a terminal and we start by creating a directory called players app. Once we created the players app directory, we change into it. Angular offers a great command line interface called the Angular CLI. The Angular CLI is not only great for scaffolding application, but it's also great to execute commands or to generate new building blocks. Nest offers something pretty similar, which is called the Nest CLI. To use the Nest CLI, we can go ahead and install the Nest.js CLI globally. To install the Nest.js CLI globally, we have to type npm i-g at nest.js CLI. Since we installed the nest CLI globally, we have a nest command available. To scaffold a new nest application, we can type nest new and then pass an application's name. In our case, players app backend. The initialization wizard lets us choose our preferred package manager, which in our case is npm. After we choose our preferred package manager, it will install all the necessary node modules for us. We successfully scaffolded a new Nest.js backend. Let's explore the files in an IDE. If you already worked in Angular, this file structure seems pretty familiar. So on the top level, we have a bunch of configuration files for ESLint, tsconfig, and we also have a Nest CLI JSON. So the Nest CLI JSON contains some basic configuration and is pretty similar to the Angular JSON. But more interesting for us now is the source folder. So in the source folder, we have a app controller, a app module, and an app service, and a main TS, which contains some initialization logic. So modules and services, this sounds pretty familiar from Angular. And even my ID is kind of confused because he thinks we are actually in Angular, but we are in Nest. So let's explore the file content of the app module. So in the app module, we export a class called app module and we decorate it with a module decorator exported by Nest.js common. This module decorator accepts some metadata, and this looks pretty familiar. So we have an imports array, a controllers array, and a providers array. So the providers provides services. Our app service, for example, is decorated with add injectable, which makes it available to dependency injection. The only thing that looks different from Angular is the controllers property. In Angular, we heavily deal with components, but in a backend, we don't really have components, but we have controllers. So we want to build REST APIs and instead of components, we will use controllers. So let's explore our app controller. So our app controller uses dependency injection to get a hold of the app service. The app controller also contains a get hello method that internally calls appservice.getHello and returns its value. The getHello function is decorated with an addGet. This addGet is provided by Nest.js common. The addGet makes this function accessible over REST. Whenever we now do a get call on our server, the getHello function gets invoked. Let's see that in action. 
<clears throat> so let's go ahead and run the start command in our package JSON, which will start up our Nest.js backend. Once it's started, we can hop over to our browser, open a new tab and paste localhost 3000. And we see that hello world gets printed. So behind the scenes, our controller gets invoked and the get hello method gets called. That's pretty cool. We successfully generated a Nest.js backend with a default controller. For our application though, we want to provide a dedicated player's endpoint. So we want to provide something like this, localhost 3000 slash players. And this should return a list of players. Currently, of course, we get a 404 because no such method is implemented. So let's go ahead and implement such a method. To implement the players app endpoint, we hop over to our terminal and change into the players app backend. The nest CLI is not only useful for scaffolding, but it's also very useful to generate building blocks. So whenever you generate a new feature in Angular, you would probably start off with a module. And previously I mentioned that Nest is deeply inspired by Angular. So it also uses the same concepts and the same building blocks. So we can start off by generating a module. So we can type Nest G, which stands for Nest Generate, and we want to generate a module players. So this command generates a players module and updates the app module. So it basically adds the players module to the imports array of the app module. A module alone doesn't do much. To deliver players over a REST endpoint, we need a controller. So again, we can use the nest CLI to generate a controller. So we can go ahead and generate nest G controller players. This command generates a player controller with an according spec file and also updates the players module. So it adds the players controller to the controllers array in the players module. A new players directory with a players module and the players controller got added. Furthermore, the players module is added to the imports array in our app module. The players controller is a simple class that is decorated with add controller. The decorator accepts a prefix, which is the base path to access our controller. So everything that is called with slash players will hit this controller. So next we can implement a get players method. So we say get players and we are going to return an array with player one and player two. For the simplicity of this video tutorial, we currently just forget about typing our get players function. So now we have a controller with a get players method. But at this point, this get players method doesn't get invoked if we would hit the slash players endpoint because it's missing a decoration. So we can go ahead and decorate this function with at get, which is provided by nest. If we now hop over to the browser and refresh the players function, we will get player one and player two. So we successfully implemented a player's endpoint. Of course, we could return more sophisticated data from this get players method. But in a real world scenario, this would probably not be some static value, but it would be something that you would read from a database. In Nest.js, every access to data is done in a service. Again, this is pretty similar to Angular. So let's again hop over to our terminal and generate a service. To generate a service, we can simply type nest g service players. This generates us a player service and an according spec file and also adds it to the providers array in the players module. The generated player service is a simple class that is decorated with the add injectable. The add injectable decorator makes it available for nest's dependency injection. As I mentioned, a service is usually the place where you would perform data access. For the simplicity of this tutorial, we simply copy some players as a private field. We then expose those players over a getPlayers method that simply returns this.players. In our controller, we can now use dependency injection to get a hold of our player service. Instead of returning a hard-coded array in the getPlayers function, we can now call our player service .get players. If we now refresh our browser tab, we receive an array that contains players objects. We successfully implemented a players endpoint that uses a controller method, which then calls a service method to deliver players. So before moving to our front end, there is one last detail which we have to address. So we already know that our backend runs on port 3000 and an Angular application runs on port 4200. 
So it's not the same port. So whenever we call a backend from a different port, we have issues with cores. Core stands for cross origin sharing. And it means it allows the browser to set some headers to say which frontend can actually access which resource. So by default, only frontends that run on the same port as the backend can access a resource. For the purpose of this video demo, we will just enable cores. To enable cores, we can go into the main TS function in our backend and we can call app.enable cores. Of course, you should not do this in production. The core settings in production are much more sophisticated, but Nest.js provides great documentation on their official website on how to configure course headers. That's everything that is needed for our backend. So let's start implementing our frontend. To get started with the frontend, we again hop over to our terminal. In fact, we will even open a new terminal tab. We will not generate the frontend in the player's app backend, but we will generate it as a sibling. To scaffold our backend, we were using the Nest CLI. And as I already mentioned, Angular also has a great command line interface called the Angular CLI. So similar to the Nest CLI, we can go ahead and install the Angular CLI globally by using npm i g Angular CLI. So once we globally install the Angular CLI, we have it globally available as an ng command. So we can now go ahead and use ng-new and we want to generate a player's app frontend. This will scaffold a new Angular application. The only thing we have to do is answering a bunch of questions in the initialization wizard. Yes, we want to use Angular routing and we want to use SCSS as styles. Great, we successfully scaffolded an Angular application. So we see that we successfully generated a player's frontend next to our player's backend. And again, this looks pretty similar to our backend structure. We have a bunch of top level configuration files, an Angular JSON, and then inside the sources, we have an app module, app component, and so on. We generated a complete Angular application, which we can go ahead and run. So we can open up our package JSON and run npm run start, which then calls ng-surf. This then displays a default welcome page. Of course, we don't want to display the welcome page, but we want to display players. So similar to the backend, we would start off by creating a new module for this feature. So usually, I always recommend to generate lazy loaded features. For this video tutorial though, it's enough to just generate an eagerly loaded module. It would actually even be enough to skip the module and just generate a component. But we will do it with a module anyways. <clears throat> so let's again hop over to our terminal and start generating stuff. So the first thing that we need to do is we are currently inside the player's app, but we actually want to go inside the player's app frontend. And here we want to generate a bunch of Angular building blocks. So let's start off by generating a player's module. So we can go ahead and use ng, which is the global command available by the CLI. So we can use ngg and we want to generate a module players and we want to add it to the app module. So this will generate a players module and update the imports array of the app module. Means we are using an eagerly loaded module. I have a great Angular tip that shows you how you can use the Angular CLI to generate a lazy loaded feature. You will find the link to that video in the description below. So we successfully generated a players module. So next we also want to generate a players component. So we can go ahead and type ngg component players and we want to add it to the players module. So this adds a players component with an according spec file, then an HTML file, some style sheets, and it also adds it to the declarations array of the players module. In our file structure, we see that the players folder got added and inside the players module and the players component. Furthermore, I also added some global style sheets and a navigation component. Our Angular app still displays the default site that was generated by the ng-new command. So let's change that and display our app navigation and then our app players component. If we now take a look at our running application, we see that a nice navigation bar gets added on top and then we also see this players works. So that's actually our players component. Of course, we don't only want to display players' works, but we want to display the actual players. 
So let's update our template. So to save us some typings, I already prepared the snippet, which I'm simply going to copy in. So this snippet uses the async pipe to subscribe to a player stream and then uses ng4 to loop through all the players and display player details. So now, where does the player stream come from? Well, we have to create one in our component. So in our component, we can go ahead and create a player stream, which is of type observable. And for the simplicity of this tutorial, we simply use the any type. So of course, at this point, nothing happens. So how do we get our players? Well, we want to get them from our backend. To get data from a backend in Angular, we have to generate a service. So again, let's hop back to our terminal. We already used the ng-generate command to generate module or components. So let's also use it to generate a service, which we call players. And we want to generate it in the players directory. So if you run this command, a player service and an according spec files gets added to the players directory. Inside the player service, we actually want to perform an HTTP call to get the data from our backend. To use the HTTP client, we first have to import the HTTP client module in our players module. Once we added the HTTP client module to the imports array of our players module, we can inject the HTTP client inside our player service. To perform the HTTP request, we add a get players method. And inside this get players method, we call this.http client.get and then we add our backend URL. In a productive application, this URL would usually come from an environment file or from a configuration file. For our case, it's enough if we just hard code it. So we just hard coded the URL to HTTP localhost 3000 slash players. And of course, we have to return this. We provided a player service that is capable of fetching the players from our backend. To display them in our front end, we still have to call the getPlayers function from our component. So let's go to our component and inject the player service. Once we injected our player service, we can use the ng-on-init lifecycle hook to call our player service.getPlayer and assign it to our players observable. If we now refresh our browser, we receive all the Real Madrid players delivered by our backend. Before wrapping up, I quickly want to revisit the commands we use to generate our backend and the commands we use to generate our frontend. Let's start with the backend commands. In the backend, we first globally installed the Nest CLI. We then used Nest new to scaffold a Nest application. Then we changed into the scaffolded application and we used the Nest generate command to generate various building blocks. We generated a module, a controller and a service. If we now compare this with the steps that we did in the front end, we notice that they are almost identical. So in the front end, we first globally installed the Angular CLI. We then used ng-new to scaffold a new Angular application. We then changed into this application and used the ngg command, which is short for ng-generate, to generate various building blocks. So we generated modules, components and services. So the commands are very similar and also the building blocks are almost identical. The only thing that kind of varies is that in frontend we use components and in the backend we use controllers. So thanks to Nest and Angular similarity, it's straightforward for Angular devs to build backends. As an experienced Angular dev, you will be very fast with Nest.js, even if you have never heard of it before. I think Nest.js is a very, very nice framework, which is especially interesting for Angular developers but also for developers outside the Angular world. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to not miss any future tips on Angular or modern frontend development.